the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for July 14. As Christina dies off in the eastern Pacific, another one takes its place. 6E has formed a tropical depression there now. And Karina is now, according to us, a remnant low after briefly reaching tropical depression status near the Philippines. In the Atlantic, it's day 44 of hurricane season. We've marked a 10% area still in the main development region. Doesn't look like it's going to form, but you never know at a year like this. Six storms already so far in the basin. Day 61 in the eastern Pacific. We've also marked a 20% area uh, further down to the south there uh, towards the end of the three to five day period. Could be a slight chance of a system that will grow in chances later on. In the western Pacific, another marginal chance there, a 10% headed towards Guam in the next five days as well, unlikely. And in the Indian Ocean, no systems active at this time. The southern hemisphere is similarly quiet as you would expect at this very interesting time of year. So let's take a look at the satellite imagery today. The Atlantic is what we're looking at there. Uh, the system that's going to end up in that 10% zone hasn't yet materialized, so that would be a good start if it did, but it hasn't. Uh, there is an interesting tropical wave emerging, off, about to emerge off the coast of Africa. Looks interesting so far, but like many tropical waves, it could dissipate very quickly once it emerges over water. We'll see. Might give us a good indication. In the Gulf of Mexico, very quiet. The East Pacific, let's take a look here. Christina, the remnants of it, still very visible and about twice the size of the rather small Tropical Depression 6E, which has a outside chance of reaching tropical storm status. If it does, it won't last very long. National Hurricane Center has it finished in the next three days, I believe, um, after peaking as a minimal tropical storm. In the Western Pacific, you've obviously got Carina there, visible just about reaching the system now. Uh, it would appear that the center of circulation is completely shot and the 10% area down there as well, which will materialize probably from that tropical wave that's about to arrive in Chuk. Uh, elsewhere, the basin is quiet still. The South Pacific, still looking fairly quiet as well. Again, you would expect this at this time of year. A few thunderstorms bubbling up across the uh, Solomon Islands into Vanuatu. In the Indian Ocean, things looking very active here actually. A lot of rain falling for this monsoonal pattern continuing, particularly in eastern parts of India, but most of the rainfall is occurring over uh, water right now, apart from that small area of India. Sea surface temperatures then across the world, this is what they look like right now. The eastern Pacific has still got that narrow area of warm waters, which has been pushed even narrower than usual by the uh, La Nina effect. Uh, the Atlantic though is really profiting from that because sea surface temperatures really rising 30 degrees plus in parts of the Gulf of Mexico and off Cuba as well very warm waters now extending even further uh, really setting up uh, for a potentially very active season the Indian Ocean looking fairly warm of course you don't really expect uh, systems at this time of year because of the pattern that's uh, currently dominant you usually get it towards September October at the earliest and in the Western Pacific, things really getting warmer here now as well, pushing up towards 31, 32 degrees Celsius across Luzon, out towards the northern part of the Philippine Sea, actually slightly cooler further south, as has been the case for quite a while, uh, which is an interesting feature, but it is a common feature in the Western Pacific. Sea surface temperature anomalies, though, show you just how warm they are compared to average, and you see that small area where this... Uh, where Carina is right now actually is well above average and you can see the La Nina still pronounced in the eastern Pacific not much above average there the Atlantic though above average in most of the areas that matter when it comes to this tropical uh, season this year well on July 14th at 1916 uh, tropical cyclone 4 hurricane 4 was making landfall in South Carolina there's one damage picture of what that storm did um, toppling quite a few bridges that's a railway bridge there along the coast uh, that was toppled by that storm uh, number three was also active formed earlier than four yet four had already become a category three hurricane had weakened to a category two at this point and number three was going to become a hurricane later on uh, number four actually was the second major hurricane of july in that year 
Well, back to this year and this century, the next name on the Atlantic naming list is Gonzalo. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking out for Douglas. Could it be 6E? We'll see. In the Central Pacific, the next name on list one is Hone. Over in the Western Pacific, we're still looking out for Sinlaku. No one named it this time around when it came to the Philippine system there. Uh, rightly or wrongly, probably rightly, in the North Indian Ocean, the next name on list one is Gatti. In the Southern Hemisphere, if we see any more activity anytime soon, Imogen is next in the Australian region, followed by Joshua. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, we kick off the season with Alicia. And in the South Pacific, the next name is Yolanda. That's all for now. We'll have another update, Tropical Weather Bulletin, tomorrow. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.